Hey, this is Scott with Wet Edge, and I'd like to welcome you to another video in Wet Edge's how-to video series. And in today's video, we're going to, going to be discussing how to select the pool water color that's right for you. Because we understand that this is a big decision. This is, this is the final touch on the project. This is what you look at when you're looking out your living room window or you're out on the deck. So it's, it's a big deal. In this video, we're not going to get into the science about you know, what's happening between the sun and refraction and, and light and all that. I'm not going to bore you with the details because what you really want to know is just tell me what the dadgum sample is going to look like underwater. And so that's what we're here to do. We're going to try to simplify the process for you, give you things to consider, and then hopefully at the end of it all, you'll be able to select the pool color that's right for you. All right, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that sometimes to solve a problem, you have to ask the right questions. And so I'm going to give you some questions to uh, think about which will help you in this process. And the first, this first question is probably the, the most, or arguably the most important question. And it's simply, what color water do you want to see? Are you looking for something that's firmly in the blue spectrum of colors? Um, do you want to see a, a light blue or a sky blue, a Pacific blue, a turquoise blue? Do you want to see an electric blue or something maybe a blue gray or maybe even like a blue black? Do you want to see something that has a little bit of teal in it or an aquamarine color? or even something like a black bottom finish, or do you want to have, or even a color that's firmly in the green spectrum of colors. Uh, if you can decide that, then at least it'll eliminate so many of your choices. And that's a good place to be because you, then you know what you don't want. And that will help you in this search. Another thing to consider is how important or how concerned are you how the pool looks either from a distance as you're looking out of your house into the pool, or when you come up to the edge of the deck and you look down into it. Now, what do I mean by that? So let's take this pool for instance. This is our Tahoe Coast and our Primera Stone line. And I have a little sample here. Now, and by the way, it's always important to get these samples wet so you can get an idea of the, the texture, but more importantly, the color. And I'll explain about that further. So as you can see in the sample, you can see the aggregate and you see that dark gray color. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is we often get asked, you know, what would you suggest? And we do like a lot of the gray type finishes like our smoky gray or our dove gray and our pebble line because they tend to give you really nice blue, blue gray water. But, and we've, we had a lady one time saying, I like the watercolor, but when I come to the edge of my pool, I don't want to see all that gray. And this pool, for instance, as you can tell from the shallow step here, you can actually see the gray color of the finish. But as you look out into the pool, you can't tell that it's gray. You just see that nice watercolor. Now you take the same pool and you know either low light early morning or late or cloudy conditions then you actually will see that gray color and that's where it becomes difficult you know what what goes uh, do you like the watercolor but you don't want the gray and is there a possible substitute that will give you something close to this watercolor without having to see that gray so those are things to consider as well okay one last thing to consider and that is when you're looking out at your pool, do you want the color of the finish and the watercolor to pop or stand out more, or do you want it to be more subdued and sort of blend uh, with, your surround with, the, with all the materials in the backyard? So that's something to consider. Like with this pool, you're looking at it and you have a predominantly, for lack of a better word, white backyard. I mean, you have your, your, your bushes and your plants, but predominantly what you see is this nice light colored decking, light colored coping, that raised wall with the light colored stone on it, you know, contrasted against this darker gray finish with this nice blue water. And it just tends to pop more. Or, you know, as you're looking on your screen, you see another pool with our midnight ocean in it. And you see all that light colored rock against that black bottom finish with that, it just pops. Or you know, as you're looking now at another pool, this is the North Shore Tahoe, it's a smaller pool in the backyard and you see that gray decking or that cement colored and the, the Tahoe kind of just blends in. So it, you really can't see a transition there. So that's just something else to consider as far as when you're looking out, do you want it to stand out? Do you want it to pop or do you want it to be more subdued and just cut, sort of blend? So again, just, just one last thing to consider. All right, so now we've given you some things to consider. We're hopefully gonna try to simplify the process even further. So hopefully by now, you have a better idea of what you don't want and you're narrowing in on what you do. And so how are we gonna do that? What we decided, what we, the route what we wanted to take was we're gonna try to separate the different finishes and put them in groups or categories of hues that they cast. So like for instance, when we asked earlier, do you wanna see 
something that, or have a color or finish that's gonna give you something more in the blue spectrum of colors, which that happens to be one of the color categories, color categories that we have, uh, which are true blues. Uh, and when we say true blue, that under normal conditions, uh, or, or under most normal conditions, they're gonna cast something in that blue spectrum of color. Now that could be anywhere from like a sky blue or a baby blue, uh, to an electric blue, or to a blue gray, or a steel blue. Or you, we have our aquamarines. Uh, something that's blue, but just a hint of teal in it. Um, and so you know, you, those will range from lighter to darker shades of aquamarine. And then we have our aqua greens, uh, finishes that give you a decidedly greener hued water. And when I say green, I don't mean like moss green or algae green or grass green. It's a very sort of, again, it's more of a, it's green with a little bit of blue, but it definitely favors more of the green spectrum of color. And then last but not least, we have our black bottom finishes. And those can be tricky because I've seen black bottom finishes cast either blue or green. Okay, now most of you have probably seen at one time or another, the, the disclaimer is that us manufacturers either put in our brochures or on our website telling you that this photograph, or you can't go off this photograph because of you know, X, Y, and Z. And th these are variables that can influence what he was cast in one way or another. And these are variables such as the size of the pool, the depth of the pool, the surrounding materials, the water chemistry itself, and the amount of sunlight or the lack thereof. And then lastly, you know, any preconceived ideas that we have in our heads, or either from a picture that we've seen of a beach in the Caribbean or of Hawaii, or a picture of a pool, or a pool we've actually seen. And also along with just how we perceive color as well. All of these things come into play and can either pull out a little bit of blue or a little bit more green in any uh, watercolor that we're going to be looking at. So we're going to drill down a little bit deeper into each one of those variables. Okay, the first one we're going to look at is the size and the depth. Now I know they're sort of two, but I always kind of like to try to treat them as equals because traditionally as a pool gets bigger, usually gets a little deeper as well. Now there are big play pools out there where they only get to maybe about five feet. But again, usually they're gonna get deeper as they get bigger. And I know you've probably read these disclaimers and have an under, you know, sort of a, you know about them, but we're hoping that we, you know, we can give you some images side by side to really have them hit home for you and make, make more sense. So we'll use this pool again as an example. This is a Tahoe Coast, and you can see that it's a, it's a decent sized pool. It's, it's, it's a good 35, 40 feet long. It's a good 20, 25 feet wide. And at the deep end down at the far end of this pool, it's probably a good nine, 10 feet deep. Now compare that with the pool, the other pool, that Tahoe Coast pool that's coming up on your screen. It's significantly smaller. It don't, that pool right there is probably only about five feet at the most. And you can see just the difference in the, the depth of color that you're seeing. It's still in that same family, uh, but it's, it's just, it just doesn't have the depth of color that uh, that you see on this bigger pool. And a lot of you folks that, are, that have a smaller pool, it's gonna be difficult for you to get, sometimes to pull any color um, because they're so small. Like you see this in a spa where, you know, it's a smaller body of water, it's not that deep. You, you tend not to get really any color at all. In fact, the, the only color you really get is actually the color of the finish. So just keep that in mind that if, you're, if you have a smaller pool and it's not that deep, that's when you really, I think, want to focus more on the actual color of the finish itself and the textures of the finish, because that's what you're really going to see more, uh, particularly up close. But even from a distance, you'll actually be able to tell the color of the finish versus like when you see this bigger pool. After the shallow section, you can't even tell what the color of the finish is. So size and depth do come into play. All right, so once again, let's take this lovely Tahoe Coast pool and use it as an example of what I'm trying to illustrate. Uh, you see the predominantly, when you look out, you predominantly see whites, creamy colors, beiges, and all those are working in concert to bring out or draw out that bluer hue in the water, along with the blue tile that you see on the spa and at the water line. And you, you notice you do see some green, but it's a little offset. It's a little more in the backdrop, and there's not enough of it to really influence or pull out that green, that greener or teal hue that could, that's also present in the water. And to illustrate this further, you see on your screen now two gray pebbles um, side by side. The one on the right, as you can see, has a bluer hue. And again, that you should see some lighter colored material surrounding it. But then you look at the gray pebble on the left and you see 
that inordinate amount of green grass uh, all in front and just close up next to the pool. And as you can see, it's taking what is normally in that true blue category and it turns it into an aquamarine. So just keep that in mind when you narrow down to what color or what hue you want, that your surrounding materials will come, will play, will come into play as to which either the blue or that green hue they're gonna pull out. Okay, now a third, a third variable we're gonna discuss, and this is often actually overlooked, it's probably not one of the first ones that comes to mind. And typically, you, it doesn't necessarily affect watercolor until it becomes an issue. And that is what the water chemistry itself. Now, when we look at this pool, obviously the water's clear, it's clean, because it's casting the hue that's expected. Now, if, um, you know, we're here in Phoenix and occasionally they get dust storms and pools collect everything, you know, all kinds of dirt and debris floating around and eventually they're gonna find their way into your pool. Or, you know, if you have a DE filter and you get a lot of that uh, sand that gets pumped in to the pool and that starts clouding up the water and that's gonna cause the, what would normally cast a blue hue to cast a green hue. Or if you have, it also be an indication of low chlorine levels or high uh, metal content. And that's typically why you see that uh, when the pool is filling up. And I ask you, never ever judge the final hue of your pool as the pool, after the pool's filled up for at least for a week. And maybe even a lot or longer, especially if you're on well water. But that's why when a pool fills up at first, it's green because of low chlorination and uh, you have plaster dust and you all usually have, uh, typically have a high metal count in the water as well. But after you put a little chlorine, sequester the metals and minerals and filter all that stuff out, that's what you can actually see it change from green to blue. And that, that ultimately should be the, the color that you should expect. But if it does turn on you, think about your water chemistry. Uh, and I actually got to see this firsthand uh, at a pool in Dallas where they had a cartridge filter and uh, there was a tear in it and a lot of the, the dirt and debris was getting through and getting pumped into the pool. And what started out as an aqua marine got put into a, the aqua green family, as you can see in this video. Uh, but now, as you can see, after the repair was, the tear was, was, was repaired and we filtered out all that dirt and dust that was nor in the water, now you can see it casting more of the aqua marine color that it's supposed to. So again, it's, it's not one of the first ones you think of, um, but it does come into play. And, and you actually, it may have inf influenced you at one time based upon um, when a photo was taken or a pool that you looked at, if it had any of those uh, conditions going on, you walked away with the wrong impression of what the watercolor should actually should be. So it may have come into play at one time as you've looked at pools or pictures. So keep the water chemistry in mind. If it goes, if your pool starts going from blue to green, more than likely it's something in the water chemistry. All right, next variable we're gonna talk about, sunlight. That's why I got these glasses on. And the sunlight can really just bring out the depth and richness of a color, particularly on a bigger or smaller pool, bigger and deep pool. But even on a smaller pool, when you get that, between that 11 and one o'clock hour, and you got the sun shining down, even on a smaller pool, you can pull some color. Now, as the sun gets lower on this pool, and we get more into shade and the shadows of the house start creeping over, this is where you're gonna see more of the color of the actual finish. Is in cloudy conditions or when there's no light, that's when the color of the finish comes into play and you wanna be, you wanna be confident in what you pick that you're gonna be, that's a color you're okay with looking at under those conditions. So sunlight can either really bring out the color or it's gonna wash it out when there's no sunlight present. Okay, to illustrate this, you're gonna see a couple of examples. Um, right now on your screen, you should be looking at uh, the same pool. It's a midnight ocean, but the, the image on the left was in low light as the sun was going down, it was behind some trees. And then the image on the right, you'll see where, where the light hits it. Now you can enjoy that sort of denim blue color that, uh, that midnight ocean gives you when in direct sunlight. But then in low light or no light, you see how it just kind of takes on more of a black bottom more of a clear, opaque watercolor, and you just see the, the, the blackness of the pebble or the finish itself. And then also, now you should be looking at a white diamonds, and as you're watching the video, the sun on that day, it was cloudy, and the sun was going in and out behind clouds. And you can actually see the watercolor change before your eyes as the sun's out, and then a cloud covers it up, and then it comes back out again. But it's pretty cool, but that's, you're seeing the direct effect that sunlight can have on the color of the water.
So keep that in mind as far as when you're in the design of the pool, the orientation of the pool, uh, how the sun tracks. If you want to see more color more often, try to, if you're able to, orient, orientate that pool with the path of the sun. Otherwise, just know there's going to be time. Some of you, depending on your schedule, are never going to see the pool on the, in light only on the weekend because you leave, it's low light, you come home, it's low light. So that's also, you got to be comfortable with looking at the pool under, under those conditions as well. So that's sunlight. Okay, folks, for this last variable, I'm going to ask for a little leeway here. I'm just going to ask you to work with me because it could be argued it's a little obscure, but the variable I want to talk about now is our perception or preconceived ideas that we have in our head because our perceptions are based on our experiences of what we've either seen in person or a photograph or something we've seen on TV. Uh, we bring that to the table in our decision-making process. So for example, um, you know, we, we see this pool and how big it is and we talked about the watercolor and then we talked about, the, we showed you the other same, same finish but in the smaller pool. And sometimes the people with the smaller pool, they want this color that the bigger pool gives them. And that's, it, it's just physically not possible. And even things we've seen in person can get us in trouble. Uh, you know, if you've ever been to the Caribbean and you've looked out and you see those different bands of color and you see that really rich, deep blue in the distance and you go, oh, that's what I want. But it's impossible to replicate the ocean in a pool setting. So we bring that to the table and sometimes we end up disappointed. Um, but we have to just know what our parameters are and be realist realistic with them. Secondly, you know, there's also, um, you can go to a pool and see it and go, ah, that's what I want. And then you get in your backyard and it's like, it's not what I saw. And I had this happen one time. I had a, a lady, she picked, um, she searched for, literally she told me for months and she agonized over this decision. And finally she went to a backyard that's very similar to this, wide open, lots of creamy, beigey tones. It was a Trillium Beach Caribbean and it cast this beautiful, crisp blue water. And she said, that's the color I want. And she got her in her pool and she was so disappointed. And my heart broke for her, it was the same finish, but it cast two different hues. And the reason was her backyard was sort of a U-shaped and the pool was right in the middle, it was smaller, much smaller than the pool she looked at, not as deep. And it was, her pool was surrounded by all these earth tones and earth tones tend to pull out more green or more teal. And that's exactly what happened. And she saw one in person, but it's, that's why it's important to keep the variables that we just discussed in mind, the size, the depth, sunlight. You know, is it gonna be blocked by the house? Is everything up close to it? Um, are there earth tones as opposed to whites and beiges or grays? All these things come into play and that's exactly why we list them out. So they're actually there for your benefit. And again, that's why we're actually trying to show you examples to bring those more home to you or, or to, to reality. Um, and then the last thing that really gets a lot of us manufacturers in trouble are photographs. Again, I referenced the Caribbean. How many pictures of the, the beaches of the Caribbean or Hawaii have you seen? Or you may have even seen a pool. Um, but it's just a snapshot under those set of circumstances. Was it light out? Was it cloudy out? Um, you, you should be looking at it on your image, uh, your screen right now. Two pools, same pool, but the sun was behind the clouds on the left and the sun came out on the right. And you can see that just how different that watercolor is. You know, was there a filter used on the camera or was there not? Uh, what are the surrounding materials? What angle was the picture taken up high? As you get up higher, you get a little more depth of color. You get, get closer, it's not as, as rich. Um, you know, there's all these things. Uh, we actually, I'm, I'm going to out ourselves, full disclosure. We, uh, you should be looking at two, uh, two pictures of the same pool. It's a Chilean Beach Caribbean. The image on the left is how it should be. But when you take that same image and you, and you print it on glossy paper, you see just a subtle change in the hue that it's casting. It went from an aqua to more of a blue or aquamarine to you see more green coming out of it. And you know, that's why we put those photo disclaimers. We try our best, but that's why we do what we do. Um, so it's, it's tricky, but then all these things coming again, we have, we, we have these things of which shape our perception of color and what we want. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed that video. Hope you found it helpful and enlightening. Um, giving you some things to think about and would like to challenge you and give you more to think about if you stay on our website and look at our videos where we talk about 
our pool finishes, the differences between them, and the benefits and challenge that each, uh, each finish presents. Uh, because, you know, you're investing a lot of money and we want to help you choose, not only get the watercolor right, but we also want you to get to the right finish for your pool. Something that's going to last uh, for a long time and bring value to the project. Not just the first week, but for years to come. And so from all of us, I'd like to say thank you from Wet Edge, your pool finish resource.